What's up everyone? This is Adam Glisby coming at you with yet another video. This is me coming uh, rancid and sweaty caps. <laughs> Today I'm going to be reviewing the Batman, right? Dun, 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 dun. That is a theme that will be stuck in your head at the end of watching this movie. I know I'm getting this review out a little bit late since a lot of people already got it out like a week of or day of. But I got home at like midnight when I was watching the Batman movie on Saturday and I don't tend to work on Sundays and yesterday I was filing taxes and a bunch of other stuff. So pretty busy these past couple of days. I finally have the time to sit down and actually review this movie with you guys. Um, I just just first right out of the gate. I love this movie. I thought it was thrilling, amazing, adventurous. Um, I thought that the tone of the movie was nailed. Gotham was a wonderful character. I'm going to get into all that, but I'm going to try and make it a shorter video. I'm probably going to make it about 10 minutes, maybe 15 minutes. If you wanted to just, like, turn this on to uh, some, some, you know, make it like an audio thing where you just listen to it on audio, that'd be great because there's not going to be much going on with the screen. I will be scrolling down. Obviously, you've got an 86% from the critics on this and an 89% from the audience on this. There is... 10,000 plus reviews from the audience who actually have been verified to have gone to the movie, watched it, sat down, and, and, and actually paid to watch the movie. Now, <laughs> here we got, here we got the uh, what to know, uh, the critics' consensus, a grim, gritty, and gripping super noir. The Batman ranks among the Dark, Knight, the Dark Knight's bleakest and most thrilling, ambitious live-action outings. I think that's an incredible uh, testament, because if you can get the critics and the audience to both like a movie, you've done something incredible. You've done something where the critics and the shills who shell out for these major media corporations will obviously talk about how much they like the film, as long as there's some level of politics in here. And then you've got enough actual story to make the audience enjoy the movie as well. Now. Don't get me wrong, there are politics in this movie. I, I think it's very minuscule in, in regards to the actual overall story. And there might be some overtones or some themes that kind of play into what it is that they're going for with a political story. But all in all, I think that this movie really does just focus primarily on telling the actual story. That story being finding Riddler, tracking him down before he can claim his next victim, and the city kind of going from just re regular mob bosses running the city to kind of having super villains eventually run the city which is i think is a really really interesting story which we never actually got to see on screen we kind of got something similar to that in batman begins but it really wasn't played upon like that we kind of had very little understanding of how how the mob ran the city in batman begins whereas this one we actually find out a lot about how the mob runs the city so i'm going to go ahead and give my quick overview thoughts about this movie run through the plot basically overall I, I like i said i'm gonna kind of give it a, a, a very basic rating and then i'll get into a more in-depth review later on where i'll actually break it down i might have a script with me so i don't get too lost um where i actually talk about all the things that i did like all the things i don't like and but that's that'll be for another video as for this video i'm going to give it some very uh superficial overtones overview of what the movie actually was um and and how it actually plays together in my mind. Now, I will say this before I go any further. Some people have been saying that, that the uh, third act kind of flops a little bit, but I personally didn't see that. I thought it all flowed together pretty nicely, pretty neatly, and I thought it made sense in a general sense of the word. I thought that the third act was like a natural conclusion as to what was going on. Um, maybe not as natural as it could have been, but I don't think it was botched like some people are claiming. I don't think it was hand-fisted or um, necessarily poorly done, as some people would say. I'll get into more detail in other videos, but I just wanted to get that out of the way because I do know that a lot of people have been saying that the third act kind of flops in regards to a payoff or something like that. And I, I get it, there is, a, there is a setup earlier in the film that they don't pay off, but I don't think that that's necessarily indicative of how this movie flows. I think that that was more just kind of someone finding out about something and then they want to they wanna do something about it. So this is going to be the spoiler-free review. I'm not going to get too in-depth with it, but I, I just, I love this movie. I think it's great. I think, like I said, I'm going to go through, I'm going to go ahead and list off the superficial things that I think make this movie great on like a surface level type thing for normies and stuff like that, but not comic book fans. And then I'll actually go in with a little bit more in-depth in the actual full-on review 
uh, of uh, why I think it is that comic book fans will like this movie more. So, superficially, I think this movie works because it nails the tone of Batman. You know, it's dark, grim, gritty, just like the critics' consensus says. Uh, Robert Pattinson, I think, does a really good job as Batman. He doesn't really play Bruce Wayne as much as you might think, but I, I appreciate that. That's one of the reasons why I like this movie so much, is because Robert Pattinson is in the bat suit for like 95% of the film. And that is just, I, I've been waiting for a Batman movie that does that. You know, I, I love The Dark Knight. I love the Dark Knight trilogy. I love seeing ba uh, other Batman movies, Batman 1989 and Batman Returns. I've gone back and I've watched those two. Uh, I've watched every Batman movie there is, and I, I do enjoy those movies. But this one probably takes the cake for me on a superficial level because Robert Pattinson is in the bat suit for the majority of the film. And I like seeing Batman in a Batman movie. It's something we haven't seen before where we've kind of had more of a James Bond-esque Batman, where he kind of works as Bruce Wayne for a lot of it, and then he turns into Batman every now and then throughout the movie. Uh, or there's like act separation where he, set, where he gets into the Batsuit and stuff like that. So I think that works. Uh, I think that Zoe Kravitz's Catwoman was kind of interesting. Uh, she was a, a little bit more, she was a lot more fleshed out than I thought that uh, she might be. She wasn't in this nearly as much as I, I expected, especially because they were really hammering home how much she was in, in the uh, commercials. But overall, I think that her character was pretty well done. I think that her relation to characters like Carmine Falcone and Batman were pretty well done. I like the fact that Batman kind of found out who she was through his own way. It wasn't kind of some chance meeting. Um, I, like the, I like the kind of character that they went down with with, with Penguin. <clears throat> I will say this, I never got the idea that Jeffrey Wright was Jim Gordon. I kind of just always saw him as like a random cop. I don't know if that's just me or if that's because I'm a comic book fan and Jim Gordon has always looked one way to me. Uh, and and uh, don't get me wrong, I'm not going to pull a Ryan Kindle and, and start ranting about how much I don't like the, uh, the fact that there are too many quote-unquote good black people in this movie. I'm just kidding. No. I, I like the movie. I think it was good. There's one line in here that really takes me out of the movie, where uh, it's Catwoman who goes, these white privileged people need to pay, or something along the lines of that. It's it's very kind of ham-fisted in that sense of the word. That whole white privileged people line doesn't need to be in there. She could have just said these rich privileged people, or these privileged rich people, or something like that. She didn't have to include the term white, but I mean, there is a noticeable, um, there is something noticeably different between the characters who are antagonistic in this movie, and the characters are who are, um, who are uh, noble and, and, and hero heroic in this movie. Um, if, you, if you take a look at that, it's, it's, it's skin color, it really is. You have the evil mayor, who is a white guy. You have the corrupt police commissioner, who is a white guy. You have Thomas Wayne, who was claimed to be a, uh, a, a backstabbing politician, who, who is a white guy. You have um, the Riddler, who is a white guy. You have all of Riddler's followers, who are white guys. And then you have... Um, what was the other one? Oh yeah, you've got the DA, who is a white guy. And, and then you've got... Uh, Carmine Falcone and Penguin, who are white guys. Now, uh, some of these characters, I think, were made up, but Carmine Falcone is in the comics. He's an Italian mob boss. Uh, you've got uh, Penguin, who's always been a white guy. He kind of, you know, uh, Cobblepot. I forget his last name. Oswald Cobblepot. Um, and, and you've got, you know, got a lot of white characters. However, when they race swap characters like Jim Gordon to be black, and then they race swap characters like Catwoman to be black, and then they make a new character where the mayoral candidate, Bella Real, it is, uh, is a black woman. And you show that they're noble in comparison to the white people. And then you have this line where you have Catwoman saying, oh, these white privileged people are so evil and all this other crazy stuff. I think, I think that kind of takes you out of the movie. Now, at first time viewing it, I didn't necessarily care that the, kid, that the antagonistic characters were white or, and the, the noble characters aside from Batman and Alfred were, were black. I didn't necessarily care about that, but seeing the line, of the, the line, the dialogue, the delivery by Catwoman, it makes me think that maybe she didn't necessarily earn her spot as Catwoman, but they did this on purpose so they could get a black actress to say this on screen 
and then we, we get the story that we've gotten. Now, again, I'm not going to try and say that it's, it's, it's one way or the other. I think this movie overall stays away from politics, even though a lot of it comes down to mayoral candidates and stuff like that. Um, but but I, do, I do think that there was that one line that kind of took me out of the movie and made me kind of reflect on all the characters. And I, I think, hmm, that's not necessarily an important line. It doesn't need to be in the movie. And you don't need to call a call to, you know, attention to the fact that bad characters in this movie are white people and that good characters in this movie are people of uh, color or ethnic descent. Again, it's 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 ridiculous. It really is. You don't need to call attention to that, and I don't think that you need to include that line. That's probably the one major negative I have with this movie, and it's such a little passing line that I can clearly get past it. I didn't let it linger when I was watching it in the theaters with my friends. I was just hooked on the next piece of the story. I heard that line, I kind of rolled my eyes, and then I watched the rest of the movie. But, I mean, all in all, the rest of the movie flows together pretty nicely. It works as a, as a wonderful thriller, action, uh, noir, detective story. And I, I, I really did appreciate it. I, I really did love this movie. I thought it was awesome. I thought it was great. I thought... Robert Pattinson's Batman showed some intellect that we've never seen from other Batman in uh, recent memory, in in recent media history. You know, we we got some detective moments from the earlier Batman films, like uh, the Dark Knight trilogy, where Batman kind of investigates here and there, but they never actually call attention to it. And then we got some uh, detective work in Batman v Superman, where Batman v Superman where Bruce is decoding a file on a computer, but he doesn't necessarily ever do anything detective-worthy. I think that's one of the things that was missing from a lot of Batman films, is that he's the world's greatest detective, and they kind of hint at it in, some, in his films, but they never do something full-on like a detective noir story like what this movie does, and I really appreciate the fact that this movie does that. And again, the, the theme, the music, bum, 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 you will, that, that's something that I, I promise you, it will get stuck in your head after watching this movie. It is such an addictive theme, it is such an addictive tune. I, for one, loved listening to it. I, I thought that the soundtrack was amazing. I thought that uh, Gotham as a character was amazing. And in case you don't know what I mean, a city is just as much a character as the individual characters in the film. And I think that they really nailed the tone of Gotham. They made it look like this really kind of sci-fi, uh, but gritty, realistic world that, that could actually exist in the real world, but it had its own unique character. It was such a dark and gritty and dingy place. But at the same time, it, it had this it had this like spark of goodness in it that could be could be rescued. I thought it was just so well done. I thought that the, the nature that they went with uh, with Gotham was was something that we haven't seen since uh, maybe the 1989 Batman films or, or you know, because, I mean, and even then I'm not necessarily keen on saying that I like the Gotham in the Batman 1989 films. I know that's heresy for Batman fans, <laughs> but at the same time, I was never a fan of the of the Gotham City in the 1989 or in the 1990 uh, Batman Returns movies. I, 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 never, I never really liked Gotham in those movies. I thought it was kind of I thought it, it, it felt like a set piece in those movies, whereas in this movie it actually feels like a real city with places that you could see being filmed on. That, that, that's all it was. That's all it really was for me. In, in, the, in the earlier interpretations of Batman, it felt like set pieces or really boring, plain cities, whereas in this movie it felt like a city that could exist but doesn't in reality. That's really all I'm talking about when it comes to you know liking the character of Gotham in this movie. And again, I thought that the, the tone was great. The action sequences, oh my goodness, the action sequences made me so happy. I was I was blown away with how well done the action sequences was. Um, now, now, how do, how well done the action sequences were. Now, what I'm saying is, if you take a look at every other Batman film where there are action sequences, he's either doing unrealistic combinations of movements. Or his punches seem very, very light, like he's not able to put a like a lot of power behind it. Whereas in this movie, when you actually look at how he hits people and you sh and you see the movement of his body, it shows that he's actually putting a lot of torque into his punch, and you can feel every impact in this movie, except for one towards the end when he kind of just rolls around all along the ground to take out two guys. Um, now, he is, you know, moving pretty quickly and he trips them. I get that. But at the same time, I don't think that kind of fit in with the rest of the story or the rest of the action sequences that we've seen in this movie. 
but I, I really liked the fighting in this film because of how, how visceral it was, how realistic the actual striking pattern of a character was, how, how accurate it was when, when the character actually put that torque into the, into the strike and actually hit with all of his might and used a powerful punch to knock someone out. I think those movements were really realistic and I really like seeing that visceral kind of full body momentum movement that Batman got to use when he was striking his, his, his opponents. I really liked those strikes when he was when he was hitting people. Thought it was great. Um, yeah, I mean that's pretty much all that I all I can do as a kind of superficial uh, talk about what it is I thought about this movie. I genuinely enjoyed it. Let me know what you guys think. Okay, don't don't let me just kind of ramble to you and, and agree with me on every point. I, I I like this movie. I will be coming out with a several part review where I talk about uh, characters, what I thought about the characters in more of an in-depth analysis, talking about the story in an in-depth analysis, so on and so forth. I will be coming out with more of those in the future. But as for now, I just wanted to give my general thoughts. I really like this movie, and I hope that you guys did too. And if you haven't got the chance to, I would highly recommend going to see it because it is so well crafted. In, in, in a general sense of the word, it, it really is a great noir detective story, and I think that it works really well for the character of Batman. Now, if it doesn't do it for you, I understand that. Some people, like some friends of mine who were there with me, didn't, it didn't do it for them. But other people who really wasn't weren't a fan of Batman, when they went to the, see this movie, they started to really like Batman. So I, I, <laughs> I'm holding out hope for you guys. All right, well... That's my that's my happy review of the Batman. I will be getting into more in-depth analysis later on. But as for now, just go ahead and like, comment, subscribe. You guys have been doing awesome. I, I have appreciated so much what you guys have done for the channel. I have got like 38 subscribers now. We've gotten like 19 subscribers in the past 28 days. And... Uh, I, I'm, I'm blown away. I really am. You guys, you, I got like 1.4 thousand views on uh, my <laughs> my uh, Star Wars hotel review where I was just kind of talking about how much I didn't like the, the, the decor of Star Wars Galactic Star Cruiser uh, hotel experience, whatever it is. Thought it looked like garbage. I'll do, I'll do more videos on that because I, I saw something in, in regards to Rey versus Kylo Ren on that ship, which just looks terrible. <laughs> um, but I, I, I do appreciate you guys a lot. I thought that there was a lot of support on that video. You guys have been doing awesome. You guys have been leaving comments. You guys have been liking this, the, the videos. I, I appreciate it. It means so much to me. And, and I know it's a small thing for you guys to like, just comment, subscribe down below. But even doing something so simple as liking the video, commenting your thoughts, your opinions, your 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 discussing with each other down below what you think, and 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 subscribing to my channel, it may be a small click to you, but it means a ton to me, and it, it's helped my channel grow a ton, and I and I, I I very much appreciate you guys for it, and I hope that our fellowship can continue to grow, and I hope that we can continue to become uh, closer as a as a fellowship as time goes on, and that one day when we look back at how how we all started out. That we can say, yeah, that was us when we first started out, but but thank thank goodness we've made it this far. <laughs> so, again, I, I appreciate you guys. I just want to express my appreciation at the end of my, every one of my videos, because it really is awesome that you guys are doing this. And I, that's pretty much it for today. So I'm going to go ahead and leave you guys with, uh, I hope you have a great day and a great rest of the week.